Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Pirate Lahai, and today I'm back with the last Tealith video for this expansion, the neutral cards. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty quick one because we don't have like uh, 60 cards this time, it's just 20 if I remember correctly. And as usual, I have a guest with me today, and it's uh, Mr. Midnight. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm the German Mr. Midnight. How are you doing, Pirate? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you ready to roll, Pirate? Yeah, I am. Let's do this, buddy. <laughs> okay, we're gonna put the cards in tiers as well, as the tier list suggests. And that's the S tier, and that's as usual uh, when cards that are broken as fuck, when they win on their own when they play, or generally just very good cards which go in every deck. Then the A tier cards, which are also very good cards. Not quite S tier, they're not quite as broken, but also can become staples in many decks. B tier cards are just good cards, they find their place, but yeah, don't quite make it into the A tier, obviously. Then we got the C tier, there are, these are uh, basically cards which are already kind of bad, but they still have an nice use in some decks, and we might see them from time to time. And there's obviously the D tier, that's the trash tier cards which you shouldn't play, cards which lose you when you put them in the deck and all that stuff, so... Let's go ahead, uh, we're going with the neutral factions now, and we're starting with the Imperial Army. First card here is uh, Displaced Civilians. Displaced Civilians. The Pirate. Have you tried it out? You probably did. Well, I mean, everyone tried it out at that point. It is a card that you use in most, you know, decks that can actually combo off with that. It yeah. was very popular in a number of decks, right? Just it incredible value. Yeah, it still is. It's it's insane. It's, it's probably the best neutral card of the expansion, in my opinion, just because it enables so much stuff. Like, I, I don't mind because you can play this in, like, uh, with Iron Road Smash and the Iron Warriors. You can play it with uh, a Burn Petrobo like I did, and uh, not Burn, uh, the, the Whispers Petrobo build. Or, uh, of course, with Lucius, uh, what else is there? There's so much stuff. Raldoron, a Corex can stealth, then punitive action. Yeah, for Goreborn, the... I also Goreborn. There's just a lot of, you know, yeah. opportunities to use that card. It, it's just a lot of free values. It's free values, you know? Yeah, it's zero it's energy. Free. It's zero energy. That's the point. So on its own, like on its own, this card, yeah, if you play it like in a random deck, I don't I think it's obvious. It's obviously not good. It's not going to do anything. It's not accomplish anything. But because it enables so many comp decks, I would totally put this in eight here. Definitely deserving of at least A tier for sure. <laughs> and you could almost argue for S, but at the yeah. same time, sometimes if you pick it up, you know, at the wrong moment, it's not great. So yeah. I agree with, uh, you know, it deserves the A tier for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. A tier because on its own, it's really not doing anything, but you have to, if you combo with all the cards, it's, it's, so, it's so much, it's so cool. That's the deserved A tier. All right, next card is, oh, holy shit, I didn't see played it even once. It's Air of Superiority. Choose a card in the enemy hand. It costs four more until your next turn. Did you see the it? Air, I think I saw it in an event one time. Yeah. Because I think it is in the current event, but I, I've never seen it before in ladder play. Never. Yeah, me neither. I don't know. Maybe it might be a good pick for tournaments if you're up against, I don't know, Elf Legion? <laughs> but against uh, Alpha Legion, you could also. Play. I mean, it would be good against uh, Sons of Oris as well, especially for Targos and all that stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, the fact that it doesn't draw you a card, I yeah, feel like that's, it's a bit of a waste, you know? That's definitely the problem. If this card would draw me a card, it's, it's the same problem as with what's it? What's the name? Underground War or something like that? It's like the bad Orbital Combat from Salamanders, the neutral card, you know yeah. yeah. Orbital War, I think it's called. And that's the same problem with that card. It's actually good. It's a good effect. You, you can attack it. I mean, people play Edict, yeah, for a reason. There's also a high-risk card. Why not play that as well? Well, because it doesn't draw a card, and it's it's bad this way. Because cards like these need to cycle. Ravage City and all that stuff. These you play because they cycle. Yeah, they are cheap draw. Yeah, it is, it is a tech card. And when you use a tech card, you normally want it to be able to cycle. Otherwise... You, you, it's not if you're not in a tournament, you're not out countering a certain deck. You're playing it against all type of stuff. So it's not the card that I would include in in any of my decks, sadly, when I'm playing ladder. Yeah, me neither. In terms of tournament play, I would say it's C. It's usable. Yeah. But since we're more or less talking about ladder and also, yeah, I didn't mention that, but we're talking about the ladder competitive play, basically, not event, not tournaments. Uh, I'll put it in D. Like, don't play this. It, Looks cool to disrupt your enemy, but there are better options and yeah. yeah. They're just gonna pick something else to do at this point, so it's not it's not worth playing in your deck. Very either. likely, very likely. And if it's late game and they're top decking, uh, the cost reduction or the cost increase rather usually doesn't do much, I think. <laughs> 
No, it's it's useless at that point. Yeah. Okay. Mm, disappointing, but nonetheless, we got a couple more cards here, of course. Uh, auxiliary. Oh, what, Jesus Christ! What's what's it pronounced? Auxiliary primus. Uh, gee, English is sometimes so fucked up. Auxiliary <laughs> primus. <laughs> auxiliary primus, buddy. Okay. I'm not your buddy. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, I am your buddy. Sorry, pirate. Sorry for lashing out. I am your buddy. You'll be all good, my man. I You'll be all buddy. good. Oh. You can see the card again. You got it. Let's go. <laughs> Auxiliary Primus. There you Was go. it okay? Oh, thank you. So that's uh, the addition for the Solar Auxilia. It's a 2 energy 1 2, which is terrible. Uh, resolution each friendly Solar Auxilia deals 1 damage to a random enemy. Uh, it's okay if it comes from Ornatov or something, <laughs> to be honest. Well, obviously. I mean, I played a lot of Scoria Auxilia, yeah. and uh, this is in that type of deck. It works very well because of the energy manipulation. But as its own, if you don't have anything else on the board, and even if you have one or two units, it doesn't generate awesome value. But when you're playing energy manipulation, it does feel good. Mm. I'm not, I'm not that. I wouldn't play that in any other deck than that doesn't have any energy manipulation, to be honest with you. I don't know about you, but... I played Lucretia with uh, Zoo-type Accelerate Auxilia a bit. I didn't try Scoria because, I don't know, it kind of turned me off, to be honest. These guys just didn't make it in the in the list. I mean, if you go really wide, they can do something, but their stats, unfortunately, they instantly die. You have to protect them somehow, and I don't know, it's just too nice for my taste. What do you think? I'd say they're like C tier. They they playable as you said in some circumstances. I but... think it's C tier because it's only playable with a handful of decks, maybe one or two, and that's it. You won't include that in any other deck that is not pure solar solar auxilia build. You know what yeah, I mean? Okay. So I would agree with a C tier here because otherwise it has no value. It's not complete trash. That's why it's C tier. No, so. <laughs> I would play it in, in yeah, I would play it in a in, in you know specific decks, but yeah. not not in all decks. Okay, sounds fair. Sounds fair. Well, for the next card, it's uh, Displaced Civilians uh, times 2. It's Darkening Skies. Put in play 3 Displaced Civilians for each player. So you might say that it's even better than Displaced Civilians, but it's not in my opinion because it costs 3 energy and not 0 energy. And it only summons 3 more dudes. The only uh, the only decks I play this in is Goreborn. Yeah, the combo with Darkening Skies and uh, Cross yes. Favor. And uh, Petrurabo. There you yes, can and I, I would say before the nerf, it was with Lorgar as well for uh, you know the uh, to actually get the uh, the I whispers the name, yeah, the whisper exactly. You, with, you could come uh, off on a lot of stuff, but uh, no, I don't. I don't see it played. I tried with it with Perch Rabo, and I I found it rather. I prefer to have two displaced civilian instead and use that spot for ah. something else because. I'm running both. It becomes too much. I'm running both in Petro Rebel. I don't know, it's fine. Are you? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, it, it works pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's a Whispers build. And we just use these to, with the counterattack to, to reduce our Whispers to a reasonable cost. It works pretty cool. It's kind of meme but as mentioned, Gorborn and Petro Rebel is the only are the only decks where I run it. So it's fine in place. But <laughs> that is good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, okay, in the, it's an okay card, okay value. If if you want to build a certain play around it, you can. The card is there, so I would definitely put that around B tier, in my opinion. Like it's okay, you know, it's not terrible, and it has value in multiple decks. I would say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh man, I I a little loopsy there, but I think it's fine. I'm not gonna cut it out. Okay. Uh, B tier, you say? I'd actually put it in C, to be honest, because you think so. Yeah, it's the same as Auxiliary Primus. It finds in fi it finds play in two decks, and it's just the first version of that. I would never play this over displaced civilians, you know. Hmm. Mm, I think you can play it a bit more than two decks, but I agree that at the it's the same thing as the Auxiliary Primus. So yeah, I would say C tier is just as fair. Okay, let's agree on C tier. Nice. Uh, next up is a pretty cool card actually. It's also a sort of Auxilia. It's the Insane Tudin. Uh, rarely draw a troop from your deck if it's a Solar Auxilia game, plus one, plus one. I really like this one. You might even run this in decks which are not Solar Auxilia. I just don't know yet which. Like, maybe Sanguinius or something. But... I can tell you that I tried this with Crow, which yeah. really needs the draws, and it works perfect. This is a very good card in decks that struggle to find some cards that they need, especially troops. They want to tend their decks. Yeah. I would play that in, in you know, decks, faction that have a weak 3E spots. It works just as good as 
you know, last rifle. It's a bit different, but mm -hmm. it, it works as well. You know, I would run that in multiple. I run that in multiple decks. It is a good design. Yeah, and even if you're, and of course, if you're running solar auxiliary, it's a must-have in my opinion, because a, a potential four-three, which replaces itself with three energy in a neutral slot, uh, this is this is actually a legion tier, you know, for a constructed card, and I think this is a really good one. I would, uh, Very good. I, I don't see it played that often, but on its own, I would put it in A tier. Like you don't see it right now because, well, the letters absolute cancer at the moment, but. You don't need like mid-range card draw and all that shit, no one cares about that. But on its own, on its own it's very good value, especially for a neutral card, so I'll put it in A tier to be honest. Definitely. You can you can if you you know if you lack some cards that are are better options, you can always put that instead and yeah. you will add value guarantee anyway. So definitely a good design. Yeah, I mean not everyone has a full collection, so considering exactly. that. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up, we got Foiled Plants. Oh my god, this card is bugged as fuck. I think it's still bugged, right? I think they've fixed it like two times and it still does it the wrong way around. So Foiled Plants is for energy. Choose a troop in the enemy hand when it's put in play, jam it and deal with damage to it. Actually pretty good on paper, but it just doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, I think it's still bugged. I, I, I heard about it recently. I think it's still kind of bugged. Like on some troops it works, some troops it doesn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm not exactly sure I would have to test it out. The problem is, again, is I, I think it's a bit the same problem as uh, air superiority where we, you know, that we discussed earlier. I think the fact that it doesn't draw a card kind of, you know, really diminish the value of it. But it's still good, but I'm yeah. not a big fan of it. I don't think the cantrip is needed here. It's just the problem is that it's a random as fuck. You don't know what your enemy has in hand unless you're playing like agents. I don't know, but in agents, I would never play this. They just have too many cards for this to include. It's too tacky. Uh, maybe in tournament play again, uh, but on its own, it's, it's like really good for energy. It's a four energy Mayetta's cruiser, but it's random, and it it's can pretty much it. I'm not, I don't really like it. I won't run it, but it's it's better than air superiority for sure. I I, I think so. Yeah, and you know, I had a situation where I played against this in the event, I think, and I had a Stellog, Stellog Ethan. You know, the guy uh, Courage destroy the enemy troop with highest attack, the, yes. the Ultramarine guy. Yes, and my opponent choose. Him as a target, and he had a troop, and I played Stalag. The courage went off, but the troop was still on the board. It was visible, you know, the, the card was visible on the board. Uh, but the the courage apparently went off, but you didn't see the effect. So I think, what the fuck? How can you jam rallies or courage if like courage is basically a rally, you know? And I was like, hey, what the fuck, what's going on? It got 5 damage, obviously, yeah, but the troop which was supposed to destroy it still was on the board. Okay, my opponent's turn now, and it was, a, it was I think, a greater demon. And I see that he has no maintenance whatsoever. And I, I hover over the card, and there's nothing. The card was still in the place, the destroyed one. But okay. it wasn't. It was a Schrodinger's card, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's weird. It's very weird. The effect doesn't seem to work properly. So yeah, I, I wouldn't it's, recommend uh, playing that really. really. Yeah, it's, until it's C tier at best. Yeah, it's C tier at best. C tier, very situational. Even if it wasn't bugged, I don't think it would make make it to B tier. To be honest. No, I don't think it. Would yeah, it's be too either. random, because you don't know what's in your opponent's hands. Oh, next up, uh, the best card from the Imperial Army. It's of course the legendary. It's a uh, Neoro Sukathan, Admiral of the Jovian Fleets. It's a Solar Auxilia as well, so some synergies there. Amazing effect. Uh, enemy tactics cost two more. Simple it, and very good. It's great. It's, I mean, honestly, <laughs> a, a four cost that, uh, you know, make that cost of trace for, for two, man, it's just crazy good. It's it's honestly amazing. In my opinion, the best cards that came out. Probably one of the best, if not the best card that came out of the neutral expansion. Yep. For sure. It's just so good. So good, bud. Very good. I'll put this in any deck which can protect her. Front lines, precognition. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Imperial Fist do great with that. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of faction that do amazing. Even if you don't, even in, I know you don't like Karn, but even in Karn, I could find some niche for her because sure. it disrupts so much of the opponent gameplay and it's still a 3 4, you know? Yeah. I mean, what, what else do you play on 4? You play just Wraith on 4 with Karn, right? Exactly. Exactly. Which is why it's, it's a great card. I would run that in almost every deck. Yeah, I mean, almost every deck, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I run it, like, for the rule of thumb, so to say, is run it in every deck which can protect her, like, Nomos was perfect for that, for example. He can give her uh, he can give her a survivor with the teaching or with the with the chaplain dude. 
he can obviously he has frontline almost by default so he, she can't get flanked or anything she actually won me games on her own just because she sticked around and then they obviously have some stuff like i don't know high initiative warlords yeah like iota causeway and if we really ever see them again i think they have a pretty weak four spot both of them so you'll have, yeah. you will have the initiative when you're going first. And playing this in curve will disrupt your opponent a lot. So I'd say this is one of those cards which wins on its own if it sticks. And I'll put it in S tier. Yep, I agree totally. S tier for sure. That is an amazing card. Buy it if you see it. I mean, it was in shop recently. So it, it was, it. it was, yeah. It was you, missed a, you missed a good card. <laughs> All right, so and the last card is uh, Onatos Sparge buff card. Uh, Mess Messian 5th. 7 energy, 6-6 six, six frontline, uh, 5 energy put in play by Messi in 5th. I would never play this in Constructed, to be honest. It... I wouldn't play that in any decks. The yeah. only reason I think it's good is because it can be obtained by Arnett of Barge. Yeah, I don't know. It's too costly for what it does. It needs to stick to turns and not attack. This is what I really hate about high energy troops, which have to use their ability. And those abilities really don't do anything that's really impactful. It duplicates itself. Uh, the artwork is cool, but yeah, besides buffing one of the spots, I don't think it finds any use. If you're playing Solar Auxilia, you want to play a really low curve. Yeah, you want to play Zoo. Uh, overwhelm your opponent as fast as possible, yeah. And uh, put some energy troops in your deck, which don't have immediate board impact and have poor stats for their cost. So I would put this in D tier. It's a trap when you play yeah, this, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, D tier. I've never seen anyone play it by you know on its own it's great when you get it with arnett of barge you're super <laughs> super happy but that's yeah. not the card right uh, so yeah the card as a whole is just at that point you do, there's better frontline options in the neutral pool already definitely. just use them definitely all right that's it for the imperial army uh, looking okay some trash cards as expected but uh, three cards which made it to s and a tier not too shabby not yep. too shabby let's Pretty continue cool. Cool. with the toaster boys the mechanicum uh, here we got a couple of good cards as well. Pretty nice, but I think they, in general, they got a pretty good uh, lineup here as well. Uh, the first one, not so much. It's the gun batteries. It's a two energy, one three structure, which obviously can't attack because it's a, it's a structure. And resolution and deal one damage to random enemy. Oh, that's is, just bad. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's okay when it comes from Tagma Deformation. You know, the, the owner of Sparge for Decima. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then it's yeah, yeah, yeah. fine because, uh, well, it's better than some other stuff which comes from that. But I see no scenario where I would ever play this. There like, is no point in playing seriously. that in your deck. I don't see why you would play that card at all. It just it will just die, or it will do one damage. It, it, I would say in most cases, opponent will just play and ignore it. You know? Mm, yeah, probably. It's like uh, there's also the uh, three, uh, four energy three three. I don't know the name. A secretary squad, I think. Yeah, the one that deals two damage on yeah, resolution. Yeah, it's kind of the same. And you, I remember these being played and stuff like uh, Mandragorix, like Burn Mandragorix. Decks where you basically just put anything which deals damage at the end of their turn in your deck. Uh, which was basically Mandragorix. And I don't know, th this might find play in there, but not really. Because, no, I don't think so. Yeah. It's, nah, it's it's just bad, man. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't yeah. see it being played at all. It's yeah. D tier for sure, I think. Yeah, let's put it in D tier. It's yeah, it just doesn't do anything. It's yeah, a waste of a deck slot in my opinion. Next one's okay. It's pretty good actually. It's a dark tech adept, three energy two three, so subpar stats. But on resolution, you create a chaos mechadent mechadendrite. Jesus, I hate this. I hate this name of these things. Chaos Mechadendrite in your hand. Mechadendrite. Mechadendrit. It's so easy in German. Mechadendrit. Yeah, but in, yeah. in English it has to be Mechadendrite. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, the Dark Tech <laughs> Adept. This one is just a neutral buffer for all the mechanical warlords, in my opinion. You play this in Decima, it's pretty cool because you can use the Mechadendrite with the one extra energy he provides with playing a troop. Uh, he, he's just okay. And then, of course, uh, what's his name? You don't see him at all currently, but... Uh, Elbow Hall, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a better generator than the 4NG 3-4, which you sometimes see in those kind of decks. So, this is a good card. It's okay. I, I like it. Uh, I think I think it's good just because it has immediate value. Yeah, it has immediate you, you value. You know you will have something, so at least there's that. And the opponent needs to deal with it, so... As a whole, I think it's a good card. 
it, yeah. it definitely has its place where you know you want that kind of stuff where you want to buff your stuff up you know yeah. so yeah Haifa also plays this by the way it's a yeah, pretty good yeah, three spot cut. yeah because yeah, Haifa cool. can get those uh Meldens on demand and then get give the Meldens some more stats so I think this is B tier this is not insanely yeah. good but it sees a lot of play and it's a good overall with yeah. immediate value so if you have it and you don't have anything to play play it definitely yeah all right next up is the forge master the legendary for the mechanic and it's six energy six six um the shield it's so pretty good it's like Cory does that junior and for five energy choose a mechanic and troop and put it in play okay this one is really good i play this in ornithov i play this in Krull. there are so many just if you're playing mid-range and you have want something really good in the six drop i would play this because it's 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 a really good card and if you have nothing to do with the energy and you want to gamble a bit, or if this has like 2 or 1 HP left and you want some more value from it, use the ability. Because, uh, I don't know, I, as mentioned, I played it a lot. And the amount of times I got something really good, really, it, it was insane. It was always something like over the cost of 5. And sometimes you get a Manipul Taumu, which is 12-8 or something like that. Yeah, or you get and... a second Forge Master or a Coriolis Death or something. Yeah, and I would say it's because there's a lot of sh shit Mechanicum troops that cost a lot that you would never play in your deck, yeah. but that when you get it for five, it's amazing value. Right, Th that's exactly the point. Th this card is really good. I put th This is not S tier because it's random as fuck, but I would put this in A tier. It's A tier, definitely. Yeah. The stats are great. You want to play it in decks that don't have a great six energy uh, pool, you know? Definitely yeah. would play that in a lot of decks. Yeah, oh, especially good with Ornithov as mentioned because you can give him frontline and shield 6-6 six, six frontline. Pretty good. Very good protective function there, to be honest. Besides Damn the right. uh, overall. Good stats. Uh, next card is not so great, though. I don't know what what's 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 wrong with this card, by the way. What they thought about it. Auspex, uh, 6 energy and return a troop to hand. What the fuck? Yeah, that's, that's just a disappointing card. Like, the cost is way too high. Yeah, and it's just, it doesn't do anything. Like, return a troop to hands for six? That's your whole turn. You just return that to. You know, the <laughs> opponent's just gonna play it again, for fuck's sake. There's an inescapable cell that costs three, increases and... the cost by two. Yeah. Like, for half the fucking cost, man. This this card is just a joke. Yeah. Damn right. I don't know. Because I was thinking, why does it cost so much? Did they have some super elaborate combo in playtesting? Are they afraid of, like, Warp Retreat? Point, uh, 2.0 or something like that but this is in the end i didn't find anything this is in the end just the uh, double the cost inescapable cell without the extra effect i don't know why you would ever play this even in neutral decks which don't have hard removal you have to use it at least on a group which has like at least the cost of seven energy to make it at least one energy value from this card while skipping your turn um not gonna happen i would put this in f tier if i could but we are going yeah. to d tier so... yeah i would i would i would put it in remove from the game tier yeah for sure terrible <laughs> it has to be reworked or something has to be done there this card i don't know why you would ever play this all right you would uh, that felt bad but next card is also super weird uh, promethium refinery again a structure uh, obviously can't attack eight energy five ten and for zero energy it <laughs> fills four energy Oh, man. It's it's a weird one. It's a very weird one. I would still never play this because an eight energy troop which can't attack and which doesn't have an immediate impact on the board. If it add frontline, oh, maybe, but it doesn't. No yeah. frontline, a structure that doesn't do shit. Yeah. You don't really want that. I mean, if you're starting off the game and you want to play again, Ornatov is where I see this because you can give this shit frontline. If you're missing some cards and you want to play something on 8, of course on 8 you still have Kroyo Zeth, you have Linaya Hydras, you have Doombringers. But if you're missing like the legendaries I mentioned, you might play one copy, but besides that I don't see any scenario where I would seriously play this card. Uh, you... I don't, I don't either, it's just not a card that yeah. you want to include in your deck, honestly. And for 8, I would say most... Legion card will have a way better option and neutral, neutral, neutral faction as well. Play Coriol Z, play anything else, you know, it's there's no point in playing that at all. It doesn't have frontline. If it had frontline, maybe it could be annoying because it can't be Melgator. That yeah. would be the only reason you would play that. Yeah, so budget Onatov, but budget Onatov doesn't justify it as being playable. Like we have Burning Skies in C, so never ever gonna put it to C. Almost all specs here in my opinion <laughs> so yeah yeah definitely 
Unfortunate. Um, okay, next card is pretty cool though. I think I was one of the first ones who made it work efficiently. It's a Forge World, 10 energy, put in play 4 Mechanicum vehicles that cost 6 or less. Yeah, you did beat me with that card, I remember that. That can be a very frustrating card to face. Yeah, it's a really good on Decima. It's, it's the Decima card you play with basically with uh, Death of Innocence. You can actually include it in other decks as well. I saw people like Gilliman, I saw Gilliman, really heavy control Gilliman play this just for Reckoning, apparently. And it's okay. It, even in, not in Decima. In Decima it's really good. It's like if you want to play Decima, this is the card to go right now. This is what you want to build your deck around. But I might argue that it is playable in other decks as well. Like really heavy ramp. Maybe even Soul. Like Soul has another good options, but I think this is also a card which you might see with Sol, yeah, if you want to meme a bit. The third well, yeah, something. you could. If you want to meme, you could, but uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to keep it really, you know, like competitive, it's still a ten cost. So yeah, that's the only thing that it's holding it. It's holding it back. It's the cost, right? Yeah. Nonetheless, I don't. I wouldn't even call it that nice. I, I call it even good. I would say it's B2, because also... Yeah, it's, B, it's B or C, it's very niche yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, but... Like, like, you don't play it in a lot of decks, but it's, it has value in the fact that if you create it, yeah. you will not be like, oh, fuck me, like, you won't be mad of creating that, because unless, you know, you're playing aggro, you will probably have some value off of that, for sure, so... Yeah, it's and better, yeah. I did the maths, by the way. I looked at all the mechanic and vehicles there are in the game currently. Also, the collectible ones, but there aren't any. And the chances of you getting something which is a five cost or higher are like over fifty percent. And the rest of the cards, they, they don't really matter. They they are like two or three, one two. I, I don't remember correctly, but they are like two or three. I think only two uh, mechanic and vehicles which are like uh, one cost, no, one one cost vehicle, two two cost vehicles, and three uh, three and two three cost vehicles. I think. Rest is all like four or five copies. There's a much higher chance you get something valuable from that. So you get your 10 energy back or more with a very high chance. Sure, it's random. And we saw, I, I, I think you remember the screenshot the, the screenshot those posted, yeah? With the four Akatum like, Droid vehicles. You yeah. Saw it? Yeah. <laughs> so that can Crazy, happen. man. That can happen as well. And I think the other guy also the, uh, calculated the odds of that. It was something like. 0.001212% if I remember correctly. Something like that. So yeah, a bit of a random card, but I think uh, for a 10 energy card, it's actually good. It's actually playable. Yeah, it's, playable it's definitely playable, yeah. Yeah. All right, that's the Mechanicum. Uh, looking okay for them, to be honest. Forge Master uh, and the, 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 the Mechaden, Mechaden Dried. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. But, oh man. <laughs> also, Promethean Refinery and Auspex. Feeling bad. All right. And the last... Neutral faction near the chaos, and we're starting off with a pretty unspectacular card. It's a crushing power. What energy tactics stun an enemy troop? Hmm. So you play this in Corbex, and that's about it, I think. Yeah, I mean it's not a bad card. One one energy you stun something is good, but I mean I still wouldn't run it really in most decks. It's it's just the thing is it's it's, it's troop right, so it means it can't stun warlord so. In yeah. some situation, it just really is useless. So no, I don't. Yeah. It's not bad, but it's not great either. It's very meh at best. Yeah, it's it has the same problem as many low cost neutral tactics. They don't cycle. They become playable when they cycle. But then an enemy troop and draw card would be a bit too good. So I understand that it doesn't have it. But it would be like the old divisionary tactics from Emperor's Children, and that got nerfed. So I don't know. It's playable in Corbex. Not much to say, I would put it in C, or maybe even Elf yeah. Legion when you're missing some cards. So, yeah, it's playable, yeah, that's but it. not a good yeah, card per se. Not a good card per se. Mm -hmm. Next one, it's good value, certainly. It's a Trader Crew, 2 Energy, 2-2, two, two, Chaos Infantry, and Rally. Choose a Chaos Infantry and add it to your hand. So, on paper, you can <laughs> infinitely play these if you keep choosing Trader Crew, which is not going to happen because it's very unlikely, but nonetheless. So this finds play in Rome, this finds play in Chaos Lucretia, basically any going wide Chaos Infantry deck, I think, can yeah, play this Again, card. with Sisters of Silence you can also play it, it's great as well. Yeah, for example. Maybe some, even some uh, some some decks which can diminish the uh, pro stats, like it dies to a face bash, 
So maybe something like, I don't know, Ransom even just for an extra turn to play. It's definitely playable, it's good. Chaos Infantry in general isn't that, that great, so you won't get anything too crazy from it, I think. Your best bet is probably something like Sork, which we come soon to, or Zirek. So main use for it is basically in the good old Chaos Sudex like Rom or Lucretia. Mm, yeah, do you think it's, it's yeah, since as you said, that's that, yeah, it's solid. I would put it in B as well. Yeah, yeah, it does deserve the B tier for sure. It's auto include in ROM and in some of the decks, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, all right. Next up is the Legendary. Not as good as the other neutral Legendaries, but still fine. It's Sork, 3 energy, 3-3 three, three Chaos Infantry, Deplicitous, so enemy world can't interact with it. And it chooses an Imperial Army card for one energy and you put it in your hand. So again, you can play this in any Chaos Infantry deck. The ability is fucking weird, I would love to see something else on it, but where this really shines, and that will give me out, where this really shines is Fulgrim. Why? Because Fulgrim doesn't have anything good to play on 3 energy. Yeah, turn 1 you like use your ability or something, and on 3 energy you can't ramp into your 6 drops yet, unless you have like played Drilling Side and Tactical Brilliance, but that's not really efficient in my opinion. So you play Sork, yeah? And why is he good in Imperial Children, or especially in Fulgrim? Fulgrim wants to trigger perfection every turn to get his Whispers down. And you play this guy to basically have one extra energy to spend on something random. It doesn't have to be good. Just one extra energy to spend on something to trigger perfection one more time. And I think he's actually better than Kaiser Lane. Because, for, for this scenario, for this scenario, for Fulgrim. Because Kaiser Lane dies to a lot of stuff. And you want to play him turn 1. And I don't want to play something to another Fulgrim, you want to use your ability, usually, in my opinion. And on 3-drop, yeah, we don't have a 3-drop with uh, Fulgrim. You play maybe the Hall of Rides or maybe Last Rifles. But this is a great addition for Fulgrim. And as mentioned, Chaos Infantry decks, maybe. Where you run out of cards, like, I don't know, Lucretia might play this, actually, to, for, to get more Chaos Infantry. Rom, yeah, Rom, not really. Well, it's good with Warbearer as a whole. It's 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 good because it's got Duplicitous, which means it's harder to kill. The stats are okay. I mean, a tree tree for tree with Duplicitous is fine. Yeah. So yeah, it's good for the Warbearer as a whole, for the sacrifice, you know, for Ashen Circle, all that stuff. So I, I think it's a great, you know, it's, it's not as great as the two other legendaries, but it's definitely good. It adds yeah. value. Again, I would say B tier. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. Playable, it's good here. Fair. Next up is finally a cultist. Um, Corferon Star Continue. I hope I pronounced that right. I don't even know what Continue means, but at least I can read. So it's a four energy three four cultist, and it heals two and gains plus one plus zero when you put in play a case infantry. Again. Good same, card. Good card. Yeah, yeah. Same principle as a Trader Crew or Sork. You put this in chaos infantry decks. Yeah. Depends though. Like if you are playing word bearers, I would argue this doesn't see play, like for example Rom, because he has he has the bloated four energy spot. You have the Ashen Circle there, you have the Jedimus squad, and yeah, they kinda won't do much there to be honest. But in Lucretia again, in, or in any other cultist deck, I don't know what else could you play cultist with, like Ferris, I guess. <laughs> to, well, to with the... uh, you, you know, with Corfaron coming up, it's gonna be a, a card oh. that you're gonna include with him. For yeah, sure. definitely with Corfaron. Uh, you you should play this. Yeah, even probably even over Jedimus, because there he has like guaranteed value. So again, yeah. again, it's same principle as Trader Crew and Sorg. It's it's kind of beat you and. Yeah, I agree. It's so far the chaos is pretty balanced in their <laughs> yeah. value, so it, it's nice. <laughs> it's solid additions, yeah. Nothing too crazy, nothing too good. Speaking of solid additions, the next one isn't the solid edition. It's Elite Bodyguard, five energy, four five chaos infantry. No cultist, so no synergies there. And if your warlord is attacked, you'll do damage to the attacker. I don't That's know. just bad, bud. That's just bad. Honestly, first of all, it can be Melgatord. Yeah, it can be Melgatord. It can be hammered. Right there. Right there. It can be Melgatard, it doesn't have any synergy with nothing. Yep. And it's under stats. Yep. You know? And even if you if it gets some you know, deal two damage to the attackers, you're gonna play that at the latter stage of the game, all right? Yeah. And at the later stage of the game, you most of the time don't give a fuck about the two damage you're gonna take. Not really. Uh, gonna unless hard. we get something which can give Berserk to your opponent or some or something like that. Uh, this is never gonna see play. If you're desperate for a 5 drop in your neutral deck where you can only run infantry, then run Duke Mortiture or something. This card is a 
bait and I don't like it. The effect can be too easily be played around, stats are bad. I'd put this in D tier. Definitely D tier, yeah. Alright, and the last card here for this video and for the chaos is the Remnant. A pretty good one, a 7 energy 5 7 demon. Has many demons, he has maintenance too, but that's okay. Maintenance is not too bad for the stats. And Ward, it has Ward, yeah. Pretty nice. And on resolution, it gives the mark of chaos to your uh, non demon troops. On its own, even if you don't have any troops on the board, it's also a pretty good drop, in my opinion. Yeah. You won't necessarily play this in Legions. Yeah, but any neutral deck which goes wide, I play this actually. Oh, I play this in uh, in Luther, by the way. <laughs> oh, think... oh, that's yeah, that's fair. In Luther, like Defenders of Caliban, because they go wide, and this one is just a good seven drop. Yeah, besides the the, the tank, it can work. It, it has ward that buffs all your Jaegers. It's pretty nice. It's a bit of a war, but nonetheless, as mentioned, on its own is already great. Seven energy, five seven with ward. Ward gets exponentially better the the the, the bigger the troop is. So, if you can I, get... I really I tried with this troop. I find myself that the ability that gives the marker cast didn't really occur most of the time just because either I had an empty board or something. You know, if mm. you have a full board, you play that and it, it gets value, you probably, probably already won, right? Yeah. So, like, the ability doesn't do that much, yeah. but the ward is very nice and it's actually, it can be played in some decks. I actually tried it with. Uh, Kind of, you know, Kabenda a bit, mm. just because you can get it at a cost reduction and stuff. And yeah. it actually, it actually had some good value there. You know, the words in the so it's not a bad card. I did not find the ability great, yeah. but it's it's still great. It's still a good card, you know. Yeah, also a good addition for again case code decks as a late game card. Uh, Lucretia doesn't um, reduce the cost of demons anymore, but nonetheless, a player as a one copy, same in like baleful assemblies fail. It's pretty good, I think. So again, a card which sees play. It's uh, it's a demon. It has maintenance, but the ward makes it a feature, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's a it's a good uh, balanced card. It has his it has his niche for sure. Yeah. All right. The okay, chaos looking very balanced. Four cards in the B tier, yeah, and uh, yeah, one in C tier, one in D tier. Not too shabby. Yeah, the most disappointing was Mechanicum, I think. It was. Yeah, uh, they, a just lot of the bad cards. they just got the Forge They just got the Forge Master and two. Well, the two cards for yeah. the neutrals, uh, for the neutral Mechanicum Warlords. Alright, Pirate, uh, that's already it. We're already done. Uh, it already took us longer than I thought. It's 40 minutes in, but. Thanks for coming to the channel. That's the tier list for the uh, neutral cards of the Galaxy and Flames expansion. Glad you found some time for me. And you had well, a. Yeah? You know, thanks for having me, bud, and uh, I appreciate uh, you making the time as well. That was fun. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, great expansion. I like it a lot. That's, that was fun. Uh, it depends. I don't like Raven God and I don't <laughs> like uh, Master for Lupical. But besides that, it's a cool expansion indeed. All right, guys. So that was it as mentioned. That's our tier list. And if you want to check out Pirate Yes' own channel, I put the link in the description. And thanks for tuning in. Maybe we will do some more tier lists later. I don't have any plans. These were all the three I planned, like the traders, the loyalists, and the neutrals for this expansion. But we will see. Yeah. And I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you around next time. Good night out.